I love my job as an occupational therapist, but there is one glaring problem with it. I don't make nearly enough money as I would like to. Now, I don't mean to sound shallow or anything, but all of us could use a little extra cash right now. With all the crazy amount of debt and inflation going on, I could probably say that the majority of people are feeling the same way that I'm feeling, not necessarily just healthcare workers. That's why in today's video, I'll be explaining what the value paradox is, the three reasons why it impacts our ability to earn, as well as the steps I'm taking to overcome this problem. Hey nerds, if you're new to the channel, my name is Christian, I'm an occupational therapist and a nerd who really likes video games. On this channel, we discuss real life lessons that can help you level up in the game of life. Now, I'm going to be generalizing a little bit, but I think it's fair to say that the rules of the game of money is that the more value that you're able to provide, the more potential you have to earn more money. Now, I grew up my life believing that the healthcare industry is one where you can mix tons and tons of money. I mean, after all, you're providing a lot of value, you're helping a lot of people. But what I tend to realize after working five years in the healthcare industry is that it's not necessarily the case. That just because you're skilled as a healthcare worker doesn't necessarily translate into you making a lot of money. And this is because of something I call the value paradox. So the value paradox is this, is that if you provided a lot of value to one specific individual, you often are restricted to provide value to only a very limited amount of people. Where else the inverse is also true. If you provided a lot of value to a lot of people, then you often have to sacrifice the quality of value that you provide to each specific individual. Now, because of this correlation here, you often have a cap on how much value you can efficiently provide to the vast majority of people. And this translates into restricting how much money that you can potentially earn. Now, I can only speak from my experience working in the healthcare industry, but I work with a lot of other individuals like physical therapists, speech therapists, doctors, nurses, medical technicians. But I find that all of us kind of share the common problems, the common concerns we have is that there's a sort of tension between the value we're able to provide versus our ability to grow our income. And I want to give you three reasons why the value paradox greatly impacts why we aren't able to make enough money. The first reason is the restrictions to one-on-one -on -one care. Now, it is no question that healthcare providers provide great value to the community, to people. But the problem is that we are only able to provide really customized, personalized care to one person at a time. Now, there's a very big thing in the therapy world where we tend to approach things very holistically. We want to personalize the care to each specific individual, and this requires a lot of time and a lot of attention to detail. So if I'm working with seven people, throughout the day, each specific person has a specific plan of care. You know, depending on what they need at home, depending what they need to recover, I need to customize my treatment in order to fit themselves. So this limits me to what I'm able to do throughout the day. And because of these constraints, I'm often only restricted to about six to seven patients a day. I'm already wiped out after this. I'm so tired at the end of the day. But if I wanted to scale my income, I have to, of course, provide more value, right? So the only way I can actually do that is I either get a second job, I either work overtime. And this is very restrictive, right? Because we we only have a finite amount of hours in a day. We only have a finite amount of energy and attention in a day. So this really drains people. That's why you see a lot of healthcare workers getting burnt out, getting overworked, feeling really tired and frustrated because they want to help more people, but they're just already so tired, so drained, and they're not getting paid enough money to do so. Reason number two, an hourly rate structure. Now, many healthcare professionals, they work on a per hour basis. You know, I work 40 hours a week. That's a full-time job. And I know many, many other workers, not just healthcare workers, work an hourly rate as well. Now, the problem with an hourly rate is that you already have a ceiling on how much you can earn. You could work 24 hours a day, basically the whole day, and it'll be your hourly rate times 24 times. That is the cap that you can make. And the worst thing here is that if you work 24 hours a day, you have to sacrifice time at home, time spent with your family, your partner, your freedom. Essentially, all your time is now dedicated to work. Now, that's fine if you really love work and all that, but I don't know about you, I kind of want some sort of freedom so I can pursue and do the things that I want to do. At the end of the day, what is the point of being really, really rich if you have no time to actually do the things you want to do? Sure, you could be making like two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year, but if you have to work 24 hours a day, six days a week, is it really worth it? I mean, the whole point of being rich is so that we can do the things we want to do, right? To actually buy our freedom. But if we're tied to an hourly structure where we have to put in more time in order to make more and more money, then what really is the point of it? You know, I know nurses who are working double time, triple time, and you know, they're making pretty decent money, but they're so burnt out. They're so tired, they're often complaining, they don't have enough time with their family, they're often feeling really, really tired. I mean, like, is it really worth it? And that there is the problem with the hourly structure. Reason number three is the lack of scalability. Now, for a lot of us as healthcare workers, we're often restricted to providing our care in a very localized community. This can be the hospital, the skilled nursing facility, the clinics, all this sort of stuff. But we are often stuck in a certain location, and that is where we're able to provide value. We're not really able to expand our reach beyond that, to reach more people and help more 
more people. We have to go to that specific area, that specific clinic that hired us or whatever. And that's how we're able to provide value to actually get some sort of income, right? So what happens then is that many of us just simply wait, right? We wait for our annual raises. We, we wait for like a better paying job, but this is really, really insignificant. I mean, you work the whole year, you know, you just bust your ass off and you probably make three to 5%. It's barely anything. It's barely enough to keep up with inflation. It's barely enough to pay off your debts. And then you just repeat again, hoping for the same thing. But I can't help but wonder, is there a better way to do this? Is there a better way to scale our income without having to just work and work and work and just hope for the best? Now, if you're enjoying the content up to this point, make sure you go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I cannot tell you how much hitting that like button is gonna help me grow this channel here. Now, after all, I'm just a guy sharing the things I'm learning one lesson at a time, and hopefully these lessons can help you level up in the game of life. So I hope you have a little more clarity on why healthcare workers don't make enough money. It's not because they aren't skilled. It's not because they're not working hard enough. It's simply that the system is built that you have a cap. You have a ceiling on how much money you can potentially earn. And that is why I've come up with some sort of solutions, at least a path for me to pursue in order to break out of this problem. And while there are a lot of ways to do this, I'm going to share the one thing that I believe is the most important of all, having an online presence. Now, the reason developing an online presence is so powerful is because it sets up the foundation for your ability to provide value through the internet. Now, I know this is kind of a tough pill to swallow because us as healthcare providers, we're very in tune to providing care to our individuals, you know, through personalized things, right? Being face to face with someone one on one. But our world is really shifting to a more digital era, right? You know, people are finding value on the internet. This is how people interact. This is how people find each other. And if you do not use the internet as a tool, you will be left behind, unfortunately. And time Tying it over to the value paradox, this helps solve the three problems when you use the internet. Number one, it helps solve the problem of us being restricted to one-on-one -on -one care. Using the internet, you can now reach a lot of people at the same time, and this allows you to provide value to a lot of people. So this breaks that ceiling there. Number two is the hourly rate structure. If you're able to reach a lot of people, you then have more potential to provide value, not so much on an hourly basis, but more so on the problems you're able to solve. If you're able to reach more people and suddenly you find someone that needs a specific specific problem solved, you can solve that problem for them through your expertise as a healthcare professional and then essentially make an income of that. So you're not tied to an hourly basis. And lastly, the internet helps solves the lack of scalability in our healthcare professions. The most successful people in the healthcare industry uses the internet to scale their income. Think about the individuals that write all these books. Think about the individuals that provide courses and classes online. They essentially use the internet to scale the value that they can give because they just simply need to make a video or write something down and they're able to just distribute it to the masses, right? So they're not now restricted to a localized area like their hospital or their SNF. They essentially have the whole world to provide value to. And this is so powerful that I didn't understand when I first entered the healthcare industry. So all I'm really saying is that really try to think about it, right? Try to experiment. How can you bring the skills that you've gained in your profession? It doesn't just necessarily mean healthcare, by the way. It can be anything that you're doing and think about how you can leverage the internet to start reaching out to more people. And this is often going to have you actually create some content, you know, share the skills that you're gaining, share the things that you're learning online. And this can be extremely awkward at first, but it is really the only path that I found to be able to scale our income, especially as healthcare professionals. Now, I know a lot of people are struggling right now financially, and I've spent the last at least three to four years trying to figure out this solution. And this is the answer I've came up with, that in order to increase our income, we need to have an online presence and to distribute value, distribute our skills online to people that really need it. So that's about it for the video. Thank you so much for watching the video. And if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and go ahead and check out this video over here where I go over the five reasons I'm always always come after five years of experience in the healthcare industry. So again, thank you so much for watching. Until the very next one, take care. Peace.